if the patient is currently having an infection, the Th1 T cells would help clear all of the bacteria and essentially eliminate it. vaccine would need to be taken alongside antibiotics or will it be effective on its own? Yeah, no, there's no connection with antibiotics. I mean, I would assume when a patient goes to see the doctor, they would be given antibiotics, but then at the same time, you could be giving uh, the vaccine, which would prevent, which would reduce the bacterial persisting in the bladder mm -hmm. and also prevent future infections. But right. the mechanism of action has nothing to do with antibiotics. Okay, so, that was going to be my next question about whether it's helpful for chronic infections versus prevention. You just mentioned that it's probably helpful for both. Right, so the, um, so the way this works is the vaccine is introduced into the bladder lumen. It will attract the Th1 T cells, mm -hmm. um, which if the patient is currently having an infection, the Th1 T cells would help clear all of the bacteria and essentially eliminate it. Mm -hmm. So it could be used as a treatment, but then since the Th1 T cells have now been recruited, they are in a position to now prevent future urinary tract infections because they are now strategically located in the lining. Mm -hmm. And so if bacteria come again, they would be challenged by these uh, T cells that have now have now relocated and are now established residents in the bladder. Mm -hmm. Is that protection likely to last forever or do you think booster shots will be needed or shots installations at some yeah. point? So I, 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 we haven't done in our studies in mice, uh, mm -hmm. we haven't uh, done long-term studies, but I would suspect it would be much more uh, persistent. I mean, the protection mm -hmm. than the previous one involving uh, antibody production. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I, to answer your uh, question uh, specifically, I would say at some point, one may need to give more booster vaccinations to mm -hmm. enhance the duration of the protection. Does the protection really only happen in the bladder or do you think it will occur throughout the urinary tract with this kind of administering? So, when we vaccinate, we will be getting antibodies produced as well as recruiting T cells into the bladder. Mm -hmm. So the antibodies will be circulating. So mm -hmm. you would potentially have some protective effect against E. coli at other body sites. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, these antibodies themselves are not that protective in the bladder. Right. It may be protective elsewhere, but in the bladder, um, it's not that if effective because of the hidden uh, amounts of bacteria within the epithelium. So okay. it, it could be protective at other body sites. Mm -hmm. Okay. A couple of people asked what else is in the vaccine, specifically whether it contains any heavy metals or anything else that may not be considered no. safe. Like I said, there's um, only two components. So one is the protein, the FIMH protein, which is similar to the S protein that's on the COVID virus. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there is a, a, a small molecule, uh, it's a single strand DNA fragment uh, called CPG, which is very potent in stimulating the immune system. Mm -hmm. uh, both the FIMH as well as the CPG have been tested in humans in, uh, in various ways, mm -hmm. but not together, but it, for various other purposes. And there's no safety issue. So we think that when they combine and use in humans, there would also not be any safety concerns, but there's no heavy metals or anything okay, else. Okay, that's good to know. How have you measured success so far in the research that you've done? Okay, so the way we've uh, measured success in the mouse is basically look at the bladder after infection to and uh, measure the numbers of bacteria still hiding in the bladder following infection and following vaccination. And we've found that following our vaccine strategy, we are essentially able to clear all of the bacteria. We mm -hmm. basically eliminate all of the bacteria uh, within uh, 
two weeks of the last vaccination. Okay. Every all the bacteria clear. So that's possible to do in the mouse. Mm -hmm. But in humans, obviously, one would have to measure it using other approaches right. and maybe the frequency of recurrence and so on would be ways to measure success. Mm -hmm. But in the mouse, it's fairly straightforward. We just okay. look for persistence of bacteria. Yeah, interesting. Um, so the question of which organisms this vaccine will cover came up. You mentioned E. coli. Is it already aiming at anything else or is that kind of a future plan? Right. So the FIMH protein um, is expressed on all E. coli, mm -hmm. as well as on Klebsiella, Klebsiella pneumonia strains and various other Klebsiella strains, Serratia, Citrobacter, uh, mm -hmm. Enterobacter, essentially all the Enterobacteriaceae families. So it covers a large population of bacteria implicated in urinary tract infections. Okay. Um, but if you want to involve fungi, for example, and so on in terms of protection, one could then incorporate the adhesin proteins found on say candida albicans and so on mm -hmm. into this vaccine. And then you would cover the fungi. But for the studies that we have undertaken thus far, mm -hmm. uh, we've focused on mostly E. coli because they make up most of UTI infections in uh, um, normally healthy people. How complicated is it to add another organism? Say if someone had a test that showed something in particular, could it be customized? Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't. I mean, obviously one has to go through all the safety um, uh, studies, mm -hmm. but it's not complicated at all. You just add that as well to the FIMH and make it a more polyvalent vaccine, if you will. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the current um, uh, vaccines that are now being tested in Europe, they, they essentially a mixture of old bacteria. Mm -hmm. In our case, we'll be using very purified proteins and just mixing those alone. So uh, it'll be much more, I think, efficacious and mm -hmm less likely to give rise to side effects. When it comes to using this vaccine in humans, do you think it will mean that a more specific kind of test will need to be used to identify which organisms need to be included? So the way I um, think of it is you, do, you don't need to do, you know, uh, very so sophisticated, you don't need to, take sophisticated approaches to identify the pathogen. As long as, if you know it's an enterobacteria, say, uh, that's all you need, you can give this vaccine. Uh, the FIMH should cover that. Mm -hmm. But if it turns out to be a gram-positive bacteria or so on, then obviously this vaccine would not work or one would have to incorporate an adhesin from, say, uh, enterobacter into that vaccine. Mm -hmm. So um, as long as you know it's an enterobacteria, this vaccine should work. You don't need to do um, next generation sequencing or anything uh, to identify. I mean, you don't need to go to all the sophisticated approaches to okay. identify the pathogen. Since this has a broad specificity, mm -hmm. its activity. Right. And would it have any impact on the normal healthy microbiome in the bladder if you use the vaccine like this? Uh, that's a good question. So when one takes antibiotics, that would have an effect on bacteria all over the body. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're doing is we are introducing our vaccine into the bladder mm -hmm. and it's directed against the FIMH protein. So a lot of the um, microbiome found in the bladder are lactobacilli. Mm -hmm. They don't express the FIMH protein, so they would not be affected. Uh, because this will be targeting only the bacteria that express the FIMH uh, protein. And so the T, since we're introducing the vaccine in the bladder, it would be attracting T cells just to the bladder and mm -hmm. should not, uh, and even if this attraction of T cells to other body sites will be very minimal mm -hmm. to impact the microbiome, I'd say in the gut or the skin. Um, so the T cell recruitment, um, will not impact other body sites. The antibody production is something that will come up, but studies use, using uh, FIMH in animals and so on have shown that it does, that too doesn't impact the gut flora. Okay. So having antibodies against FIMH in the circulation uh, doesn't do 
uh, doesn't have any significant effect on the gut flora. So it okay. should be fairly safe. That's good to know. Is this type of vaccine likely to be beneficial for people who only experience UTIs after sex? No, this should be beneficial f f to everybody okay. um, who has your urinary tract infection. So it's regardless of the origin and nature of how UTI is okay. initiated. Um, since we are focusing on the bladder, yes. So it would be fairly uh, protective mm -hmm. um, against okay. any E. coli, regardless of whether it's initiated through sexual contact or Right. Or, or recurring something, existing infection. And you, you mentioned that it will be helpful for intracellular bacterial communities. What about when there's a biofilm on the bladder lining? Will it be beneficial in that case? Yeah. So um, we don't know the effect of the T cells on bacteria that are found on the outside. Um, mm -hmm. I. I mean, when you talk about biofilms, my understanding is often the biofilms we talk about is found on catheters that are introduced or placed for long periods of time mm -hmm. into the bladder. Um, so I'm not sure these would be effective as mm -hmm. effective against the biofilm stuck on catheters. Um, but if it's intracellular bacteria, yes, it'll be very effective in killing off um, intracellular bacteria colonies inside mm -hmm. the cells because what they do is they target the host cell that harbor the bacteria so once that cell dies off you'll kill off whatever is inside <laughs>